You're listening to the Rauha, Daily Guidance for Seekers with Sheikh Faraz Rabbani, who will be covering Imam Yusuf al-Nabahani's beautiful collection of 40 sets of 40 hadith of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, as well as Imam Zarnuji's guidance for seekers of knowledge regarding the ways of seeking knowledge. Ta'lim al-Muta'allim, Turuq al-Ta'allim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala Sayyidina wa Nabina Muhammad. ذي القدر العظيم وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين والتابعين لهم بإحسان وهدى إلى يوم الدين اللهم فقهنا في الدين وعلمنا التأويل ولهمنا رشدنا يا رب العالمين الحمد لله in our daily روحة in which we look at some of the guidance of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We're continuing to look at 40 hadiths on the merits of remembering Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And we also look at some counsel for students of knowledge from Imam Zarnuji's Ta'alim Al-Muta'allim. And this can be followed uh, Mondays to Thursdays from the Seekers Hub Global um, page on Facebook and this is available as a podcast on seekershub.org slash podcast called the Daily Roha podcast and in these 40 hadiths on the merits of remembrance we stopped at hadith number stopped at hadith number 27 we saw in the previous hadiths several hadiths that are related from the Prophet وسلم, encouraging to make to make much remembrance of Allah regardless of what people think right? regardless of what people think even if they think you're crazy. which And we explain that does, that does not mean to court other people's blame. right? Because it is the sunnah to be considerate. right? It is the sunnah to be considerate. But, the, but there's a positive consideration, which is called mudara, which is to uphold the good in a manner that takes good consideration of people and circumstances. Okay? That's called muda, mudara, and this, that's praiseworthy. And there's a negative consideration, which is called mudahana, which you can call um, being weak, right? where you give up what is good because of people. And so, when, you know, in one, and one of the things that the Prophet ﷺ said clearly not to leave, is dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? Why? Because that it is so essential to the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu right? He used to remember Allah in all his states. And he was commanded by his Lord, وَلَا تَكُمْ مِنَ الْغَافِلِينَ Be not of the heedless. The essence of the sunnah is to be conscious of Allah. Right? So, that's something you engage in discreetly. So you say it under your breath. You don't have to even indicate. You just keep your mouth slightly open so people you know, don't even notice. Right? But keep on remembrance. Right? And this is very clear. Um, this is one of the, th- the things that in social gatherings, etc., one sticks to the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? And, and they say dhikr is also a criteria that in life, incline towards all that facilitates for you to be to engage in remembrance or to be in a greater state of remembrance and disengage from everything that busies you away from the remembrance of Allah and the people who busy you away from the remembrance of Allah and the activities that busy you from the remembrance of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa says, وَلَا تُطِعَ مَنْ أَخْفَلْنَا قَلْبَهُ عَنْ ذِكْرِنَا Don't listen to those whose hearts we have made heedless of our remembrance. وَاتَّبَعَ هَوَاهُ And who follow their whim. وَكَانَ أَمْرُهُ فُرُطَ And whose affairs are scattered. Right? Um, and that's, they say, it's also the, the consequence of remembrance of Allah. That if, you, if a heart is heedless of Allah, they will follow their caprice because they lose the higher purpose, which is to act for Allah. And then their affairs will be scattered. So we reached hadith number 27. 
عن أبي سعيد الخدري رضي الله تعالى عنه أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال لا يذكرن الله أقوام في الدنيا على الفرش الممهدة يدخلهم الدرجات العلا said indeed there will be some people who will remember Allah in this life on comfortable beddings and this will make them reach the highest of degrees right meaning that it would not appear that they did much except that they engage in zikr of Allah even in the comfort of their bed the furush mumahada are prepared beds right prepare com- and a bedding that is prepared is bedding that's going to be comfortable right there will be some people that that's really all all they did that was exceptional why it may be circumstantial right they may, may be circumstantial they had health issues they had yeah, physical challenges right such that they weren't able to go and be of service to others they weren't able to go and learn and study and teach and do big things right right but this is a small apparently small act that has great consequence remembrance of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also because not to neglect the dhikr of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is done in bed which is the dhikr of allah that is done in bed is a dhikr before going to sleep which is an often neglected sunnah because people go to sleep because they're tired and that's a time that is easy to neglect making the extensive dhikr that is the sunnah right so that's another meaning that some people there'll be some people who truly do remember allah right and the noon there la yadhkur ran allah that is for emphasis truly allah will be remember you know, some people will remember allah on comfortable beds right either because that's all that they were able to do you know and they didn't appear to do anything else that's big or because they adhered to making dhikr in the comfort of their bed even when tired and this act led them to high stations in paradise also because dhikr in your bedroom in the comfort of your bed is something private it's easy to do public good deeds right to be the super muslim in public but what about in private when you're tired right would you give those moments for allah as one of the poets said and this call ala lisan al haqq as if allah is addressing the sincere seeker fa in adraka fa in fa in aradta darka dhil maani fa abdil ruhaka qalilan fina so if you seek to attain these meanings then change yourself a little for our sake right so this is you know the, you know the, this is you know a great promise that you know that that don't neglect that dhikr in 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 bed right um of course it's not a substitute for other deeds and the other the principles of the religion remain as they are that which benefits others is greater than that which benefits merely oneself but at the same time the first benefit that you seek is your own benefit right because what benefit do you attain if you save another but drown yourself right and that benefit for others will only ultimately benefit you and them long term if it was sincere and sincerity is not possible without remembering allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sustainably the next hadith an ibn abbas radiyallahu ta'ala anhu annahu qala qala rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam man man ajaza minkum عن الليل أن يكابده وبخل بخل بالمال أن ينفقه وجبنا عن العدو أن يجاهده فليكثر ذكر الله تعالى 
راهو الطبراني um, he says whoever of you is incapable at night to struggle in worship and who is stingy with their wealth in spending it and is too cowardly with respect to the enemy to engage in jihad with them then let them make much remembrance of Allah most high and that if you if you're too you know if you're too incapable to struggle to worship at night and you're too stingy with your wealth to spend it in charity and you're too um, cowardly you're too afraid of the enemy to strive against them then make much remembrance of Allah most high and this is related by Tabarani and Bazar and, and Al-Bayhaqi um, and the ulama say one of the meanings from that is that what is it that it's, this is not a substitute it's not saying don't pray and don't give in charity and don't strive against the enemy but if you find weakness of resolve right because what is it that causes you to hold back from the good it's weakness of resolve and what is it that strengthens your resolve dhikr of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because dhikr of allah strengthens your purpose amongst the many benefits of remembrance that strengthens your purpose and when it's clear right as one of the poets said ala mithli layla falyaqtul almar'u nafsahu for the like of layla should a man sacrifice themselves right of course they're talking about just a a beloved but the sense that if you know um, the purpose then what you have to spend for it they say whoever knows the purpose deems paltry what they have to spend for it right so how does one nurture that sense of purpose the Prophet said make much remembrance of Allah which is why the fuel of the path of Allah is remembrance of Allah And they say, ذِكْرُ مِفْتَاحُ كُلِّ خَيْرٍ right? Remembrance of Allah is the key to all good. Which is why, um, you know, there's a, one, of the great, one of the greatest books on the, remem- on the merits of remembrance of Allah, attributed to Ibn Atayillah, there's some discussion as to its attribution. It's actually translated into English called مِفْتَاحُ الفلاح, The key to salvation. It's a beautiful work. And, um, and, it, and the, the translation is published and available. Misattributed to Ibn Atayla. Some scholars wonder about the attribution, but the book is excellent either way. Um, the 29th hadith on Anas in Radiallahu Ta'an, on the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, said, In the Shaytana, Wadi'un, Khutumahu ala Qalb ibn Adam, Fa in Zakar Allah, Khanisa, Wa in Nasiya. وَإِنْ نَسِيَ الْتَقَمَ قَلْبَهُ رَاهُ إِبْنُ أَبِي الدُّنْيَا وَأَبُوْ يَعْلَى وَالْبَيْهَقِ وَخَطَمُهُ فَمُهُ Sayyidina Anas رضي الله تعالى relates that the shaytan places his, his mouth upon the heart of the human being. If they remember, if they remember Allah, the shaytan slinks away and if they forget they consume their heart and some said that this is left on its literal meaning and how we don't know right others said of course it means that the shaitan has control over your heart when you're heedless of Allah right and when you remember Allah he slinks away so we have inspirations that come to the heart. The source of negative thoughts is heedlessness of Allah. Right? And that's when the negative, you can call it the, the, the nest, negative encroaching satanic thoughts. Right? The, the, the shaitan 
makes your heart his nest, right? But if, as you remember Allah, he slinks away, right? And there's people who have light surrounding them. The shaitan doesn't come close to them, right? The Prophet ﷺ said about Sayyidina Umar, right? That, you know, the, there's, no, you know there's no road that sh- Umar takes except that the shaitan flees. So it's not just that he keeps away from him, he flees, right? Um... So this is, you know, of the remembrance, the merits of the remembrance of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, right? That it is protection from the shaitan, and which is why, you know, if one, if someone finds, you know, m- you know, they have negative thoughts, etc., one should remember Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, right? And and one of the things that helps in that remembrance is. We, we, you know, the the outward helps the inward. So if someone, you know, they're feeling down, they're getting negative thoughts, of the sunnahs is to go and make wudu. And then to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you can't make wudu, they say change your posture. Right? And we see that with respect to anger, but we say, see it with respect to, you know, the ulama say the same thing applies, as you see from many hadith, to other situations, right? So if you're sitting down, and you're getting the, you know, negative thoughts, what, whether about the religion or about other people, etc. Engage in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't, don't you know, they say, let us, you know, let us Don't let yourself go with the negative thoughts. Right? Remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But it helps to change the, the posture. And so if you're lying down having negative thoughts, get up and take a walk. Right? Do something. But... Immediately remember Allah. And sometimes it helps, if it was, especially if it was like something heavy, go make wudu. Right? Because that discrete action changes the, the context you're in. And busy yourself. Remember your Lord whenever you forget. Um, we'll look at hadith number 30 as well. عن أبي الدرداء رضي الله تعالى عنه أنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لا يبعثن الله أقواما يوم القيامة في وجوههم النور على منابر اللؤلؤ يغبطهم الناس ليس بأنبياء ولا شهداء. So the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said, truly Allah will send forth some peoples on the day of resurrection. In their faces is light. On mimbars, right? On podiums of pearl. All people will be envious of them, yet they are not prophets nor martyrs. Fajatha Arabiyun ala rukbatihi faqala, Ya Rasulullah. Hulhum lana, na'rifhum. So a, an, a desert Arab got on his knees. Right? So they're sitting, presumably cross-legged. So he sat up. He said, oh messenger of Allah, explain them to us so that we can know who they are. Okay. Right? So, and this is, you know, the, the desert Arabs were rough, but they also had this fitrah, right? The Prophet is getting to it, right? But he interrupted. He said, Oh, messenger of. He got on his knees, right? So everyone's sitting down, presumably cross legged. So he got on his. On his. So everyone's sitting down, you know, cross legged, presumably. He got on his knees, right? He said, Ya Rasulullah, literally solve, solve it for us. You know, tell us who they are so that we may know them, right? Meaning, describe what their qualities are. So we know what their qualities are, so we can be, be so we can be those people. قال صلى الله عليه وسلم هو المتحاب وهم المتحابون في الله من قبائل شتى وبلاد شتى يجتمعون على ذكر الله يذكرونه. رأه الطبراني بإسناد حسن. This such a beautiful hadith. And so the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said. They are those who love one another for Allah. 
من قبائل شتى from many different tribes right from many different tribes وبلاد شتى and many different lands right and for those of you who are online you can just list where you're from right there we have people right, from all sorts of different places who gather right and see the amr will read out where you're from right inshallah may this apply to all of us right there are those who love one another in allah right they love one another for the sake of allah and th 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 that love for one another that inclination that intense inclination for one another that is love it's out of love for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right from different tribes and different lands they gather upon the remembrance of allah right and they remember him subhanahu wa ta'ala right and they remember him subhanahu wa ta'ala and this of course tells us about the tremendousness of gathering to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Something we began with, right? We, we began with, but this is a constant refrain of the hadith on remembrance. The great merit of gathering regularly for the remembrance of Allah and loving those who remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? The Ahlul Dhikr, right? The people of remembrance. And this is related by Imam Tabarani with an authentic chain of transmission. And we'll read one more hadith, which is hadith number 31, عن أنس رضي الله تعالى عنه عن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أنه قال ما من قوم اجتمعوا يذكرون الله عز وجل لا يريدون بذلك إلا وجهه إلا ناداهم مناد من السماء أن قوموا مغفورا لكم قَدْ بَدَّلْتُ سَيِّئَاتِكُمْ حَسَنَاتِ This is one of the tremendous, this is a meaning that's affirmed by other hadiths. So why are there so many hadiths on a similar meaning? Because there's certain, we know that the Prophet ﷺ, if he said something, he would repeat it, as has come in some narrations. He would repeat it three times, right? Which doesn't mean he, he just said the same thing three times just in case, you know, um, any, um, some random sister Sadia was dozing off, rather because to make the emphasis. You, you know, there, what he said was important, so he repeated it in similar ways. And this hadith is related by Imam Ahmad and others. The Prophet ﷺ said, No people gather remembering Allah mighty and majestic, seeking nothing through that except Allah Himself. إلا وجهه except the countenance of Allah meaning إلا ذاته nothing but Allah Himself except that a caller calls out to them from the heavens stand up forgiven right all your bad deeds have been turned into good deeds that's one tells you about the power of sincerity sincerity transforms one's sincerity is ex, expiatory right sincerity is the most powerful means of seeking forgiveness and that if you are truly sincere to allah if you make the commitment that ya allah i'm yours right right and which is what la yuriduna bidhalika illa wajha seeking nothing but him himself when you make that commitment, and Allah mentions several instances of those whose bad deeds are turned into good deeds. One of the times that this is an opportunity is in gathering to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then we've preceded many hadiths on this in the earlier part of this collection of 40 hadiths on the remembrance of Allah. But here, that if one, because it's easy to go to gatherings just out of routine. And this tells us about the power of tajdeedun niyyah, of renewing intention. Whether attending a circle of remembrance, attending a class, it just becomes a habit. What do you do at 7.30 on Mondays? I go to such and such class. No. Never turn acts of drawing closer to Allah into mere habits. He said, بِالنِّيَّاتِ تَنْقَلِبُ الْعَادَاتُ عِبَادَاتِ With intentions, habits become acts of worship. وَبِفُقْدَانِهَا تَنْقَلِبُ الْعِبَادَاتُ عَادَاتِ 
but by the lack of intent, acts of worship become mere habits. Right? So, right? So the, a caller sent by Allah calls out from the heavens, stand forth, completely forgiven. And more so, I have changed your bad deeds into your good deeds. The key is to have an intense seeking of Allah thereby. Right? So practically, if in your community you don't have a gathering of remembrance of Allah, weekly, start one in your house. I mean, if in your community center in your masjid, you can have a gathering. And it doesn't have to be fancy. What do you do? Recite the Baqiyat al-Salihat. Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar, for example. Which is sunnah of God. So many hadiths on the merits of remembering Allah together. Or recite some Qur'an, listen to it. But make this part of your community's um, habits. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for facilitation and success there. And did they mention where they're from? May Allah bless you all wherever you're from. So we're also looking at the at ta'lim al-mut'alim, instructing the, the, the seeker of knowledge on the ways of learning. And we looked at the times of seeking and the importance of making the, you know, making the focal point of one's time seeking of knowledge. And the next chapter is Faslun fi shafaqati wa nasiha chapter on um, deep you know on truly caring for others and having sincere concern for others Imam Zarnuji rahimahullah says yanbaghi an yakuna sahib al ilmi mushfiqan nasihan ghayra hasid it befits a person of knowledge it is either a scholar or a student of knowledge to be mushfiqan, to be genuinely caring and compa- caring towards others, right? And to ha- to have sincere concern for them, which is to actively seek good for them. غير حاسد, with and not in any way envious. فالحسد يضر ولا ينفع because envy harms and does not benefit. And then he. Right? And the Prophet ﷺ said, envy consumes good deeds like fire consumes wood. Like fire consumes dry wood. Okay? And he says, وَكَانَ أُسْتَادُنَا شَيْخُ الْإِسْلَامِ بُرْهَانُ الدِّينَ رَحِمَهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى يَقُولُ إِنَّ ابْنَ الْمُعَلِّمِ يَكُونُ عَالِمًا لِأَنَّ الْمُعَلِّمَ يُرِيدُ أَنْ يَكُونَ تَلَمِيذُهُ عُلَمَاء فَبِبَرَكَةِ so he said, our teacher, Shaykh al-Islam Burhanuddin, meaning Imam al-Marghinani, the author of the Hidayah, may Allah have mercy on him, said, um, the, the, the child of, of a teacher, the Mu'allim, frequently becomes a scholar themselves. Why? Because the teacher wants their students to become scholars. Yeah, to become people of learning. So by the blessing of that belief that they have, yeah, that they, they, see, they, they really want their students to become people of learning. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us all people of learning. Um, and that genuine care, their children or their child becomes a scholar. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make our children of the people of beneficial knowledge. Yeah, to be exemplars for the people of piety. And there's the power of good intention. And if you seek the good for others, you'll be granted it manyfold. Right? As you are, so shall you find. Bimadinta tudan. As you are, so shall you find. Right? And if you seek, and the harm of envy is that it also comes back to you. Right? That you want others to lose the good, you'll find the good dissipating from your life. Right? Um, 
وصدر السعيد تاج الدين رحمهم الله تعالى وقت الضحوة الكبرى بعد جميع الأسباق وكانا يقولان طبيعتنا تكل وتمل في ذلك الوقت فقال أبوهما إن الغرباء وأولاد الكبراء يأتونني من أقطار الأرض فلا بد من أن أقدم أسباقهم فببركة شفقته تفوق ابناه على أكثر أكثر فقهاء أهل الأرض في ذلك العصر. So he says it's related from one of the great scholars whose name was الصدر الأجل, the most distinguished of the prominent. The صدر literally means a chest, but صدر means the the foremost. So the president of university calls صدر, right? In at least in some places, right? So the most distinguished of the prominent, the proof of the Imams of Islam. May Allah have mercy upon him. He set the time of the lesson, the sabq, of his two sons, who both became great scholars, as sadr al-Shaheed, Hussam al-Din, and Sadr al-Sa'id, Taj al-Din, his two sons, may Allah have mercy on them, at the time of the, the midday, right? which is the midpoint between Fajr and Maghrib. Right? So by that time, it gets much hotter. At the midday, now it gets hot. Right? So he said their time in the midday, when the sun's now high up in the sky. Right? So it's hot. Right? It's about an hour or so before Dhuhr, but the sun's high in the sky. It's not totally on top, it's very high up in the sky. So it, it, it's now hot. Right? And both his sons used to say, our temperaments become weak at this time, and we get tired at this time. And that actually is the time normally where one would go and rest. Because the sunnah is to start early, right? And to continue working till, and that's the time for the qaylula. Because now it gets really hot outside, so you go and rest for a while, and you come back out you know, for, for, for the whole prayer. And that's the time he assigned for, for his sons to study. So they complained that we get tired at this time and it, you know, and so he said, the father said to them, the, truly the strangers and the sons of, 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 of the notables come to me from all parts of the earth to study. So I have to give precedence to their lessons. Like they won't wait on me. Like they've come from far. So I have to give precedence to them. And out of that genuine concern for them, right, what happened? Out of his genuine concern for, for others, his own sons, tafawwaqa, right? They became preeminent over most of the fuqaha, most of the uh, legal scholars of, of the earth at, at that, in, in, in those times. And this also, of course, is an instruction to the families of people of knowledge, right? That sometimes that they may appear to give time to others, right? And of course, this not a, he did not neglect them, right? But he gave extra attention to them because his own family, they, they, you know, they, they, have to, they also have to be supportive. Right? They, you know, their lesson may be, later at night or earlier than they would want, etc. But by the barakah of what is done for others, they'll have greater benefit in that. And the, the adab for the, the, the family of a teacher or the family of a seeker is to be supportive of those sacrifices made. Because by supporting those sacrifices, they, they will find unexpected benefit as well. So the, these are two examples of having of the barakah of having great concern for others. Um, and then he warns about some of the um, qualities that sincere concern entails. And we look at those, not to argue and dispute with others um, because it wastes time. So we'll look at that. Um, 
tomorrow bi ta'ala wa sallallahu ala sayyidina wa nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallama tasliman katira. Thank you for listening to the Rauha, daily guidance for seekers with Sheikh Faraz Rabbani. Help Seekers Hub give light to millions around the world by supporting us through monthly donations by going to seekershub.org/donate. Your donations are tax deductible in the US and Canada.